We are continuing our series on uh, kingdom instincts. What can animals teach us about God and the spiritual life? Let me give you the sermon in a sentence. Actually, it's not a sermon. This is more of a discussion, conversation, um, a lesson, as our teachers used to say. It's not a sermon, per se, uh, but trust, uh, we trust that you will learn. So here is, in a sentence, one, animals are evidence of God's affection for us and display his beauty and variety, which improves our quality of life. That's in a nutshell what we will discover today. Animals are evidence of God's affection and his beauty and his variety, which improves our quality of life. Let's hear the word of God in this family worship hour from Mary Claire. Where is she? Come on, Miss Mary Claire Peeler. She is going to read for us the divinely inspired written Word of God. You can read, can't you? Yes, I'm just teasing. Come on, Mary Claire. Our first scripture that we'll be reading today comes from Genesis 1, 24 through 25. Then God said, let the earth produce every sort of animal, each producing an offspring of the same kind. Livestock, small animals that scurry along the ground, and wild animals. And that is what happened, and God saw that it was good. Our second scripture that we'll be reading today comes from Luke 16, 21. As Lazarus laid there longing for scratch from the rich man's table, the dogs would come and lick his open sores. Thank you, Ms. Mir. That, that took a lot of courage. Let's praise God for her. Thank you very much. Bless you. You may return. All right. That last passage that she read is an interesting one. In the ancient world, before dogs were domesticated, they were considered to be scavengers and dangerous. Uh, but as time passed, they became uh, milder and uh, less wild. In this interesting passage here, a beggar by the name of Lazarus Many of you have heard about his story. Uh, he was physically disabled, unable to work, and poor. And as a result, he was sick, sores, festered all over his body. And he went to a rich man's house just to get the scraps that he fed to dogs. But the rich man would not help him. The dogs, however, showed him mercy. And they came and licked his sores. That is, they provided salve or balm and comfort to a man who was hurting and hungry. And so over time, dogs have become more domesticated, uh, and we use them for various reasons, including companion dogs. Now, this is primarily a sermon about what dogs can teach us, though we say dogs and cats. How many of you have cats? Uh-huh. How many of you love cats? Good. Well, we'll get to you next time. We're throwing you in here, but mainly we're talking about, about dogs here on today. Is that all right? Um, so what can they teach us about God and the spiritual life? I have asked uh, Miss Patricia Belt if she will come and share a little bit uh, about a service dog. Hey, Miss Patricia. Hey, good morning. How are you? Doing fine. Beautiful. Thank, Thank you, you for doing this this weekend. Thank you. All right. Who do we have here? This is Astro. Astro. Yes. All right. That name comes from? Houston, Texas. That's where he's from. Hey, Houston, yeah. Texas. All right. My old stomping ground. And so now, Miss Patricia, tell us a little bit about your organization. Well, my organization, my nonprofit's called Tennessee Safety Spotters. And we've been, it's, we celebrated 12 years last Wednesday. And we rescue deaf Dalmatians, mm. train them with hand signals and sign language, and get them uh, certified to work. 
Wow, that yeah. means that's a smart dog. Yes, he Indeed. is. Indeed, all right. How long does it take to train? It takes about a year to train them and then about a year to polish them up. I like that, a year <laughs> to train and a year to polish them up. Yes. And so what are some of the services they provide for the community? Uh, we, we're with the fire department of Memphis and we're at the fire museum every day teaching the kids fire safety and we go into schools and teach dog bite prevention, fire safety, and an anti-bully program. Anti-bullying program, yes. wow. <laughs> That's true. And how many kids have you so far reached or taught? Oh, gosh. I know Astro alone has probably taught over 10,000 children how to stop, drop, and roll. Wow. Yeah. How to stop, drop, and roll. Yes. How we about also that? do a lot of therapy work with our first responders. Beautiful. And uh, since we're with the fire department, we, um, we're, we get direction from our chief where to which station to go to and uh, where, what school to go to or hospital or, so they're all therapy dogs too, so. And then you have uh, come here with Mackie and Friends, for example, right. to help yes, as well. Yes, so we are yes. delighted. Yes. So thank you for introducing us thank to you so Astro. Much. Yeah, all right. thank let's, you. Not too loud, let's praise God for <laughs> Astro. Say hey, hey, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go, buddy. <laughs> so when we talk about dogs in particular, animals, three things let me share, and then I want to um, have us listen to an interview from one of our seasoned veterinarians here in, in Memphis. Why did God create animals, including dogs and cats? First, to show his glory. God created animals to show us his glory. As Mary Claire read in the very beginning, God created the animals and he presented them to humans to show his glory. This word glory means to advertise. It means to highlight it means to spotlight. Animals, as well as humans, are designed to be a rolling billboard pointing to the glory of God, to highlight his name, spotlight his character. It means weight. It means wealth. It means worth. And when we see these marvelous creatures, it causes us to wonder who's behind this great design. And that leads us to a question or to discuss God the Father. Humans and animals, but particularly we're talking about animals today, show us the glory of God. They show us the weight, the worth, and the wealth of God. God, highlighting his name, spotlighting his character and his power. They do something else. Animals also help display the beauty and variety of God the Father. Someone as well said, William Cowper, that variety is the spice of life. And animals of all species demonstrate the beauty and variety of God the Father. Beauty and variety that comes in all sizes and shapes and colors. How many of you like rice and beans? How many of you like beans and rice? Some of you will catch that on the way home. We like rice and beans, but we don't want it every day. We want a little variety with our food, as well as with animals and with people. It is the beauty and variety displaying, uh, displayed of God the Father. He has many different facets. We can never understand him if it was just one entity. Uh, anybody like catfish? Redfish? Tuna? Yes. We don't want just one kind of anything, so animals display God the Father's beauty and variety. And here's the third thing animals do. Animals improve our quality of life. 
Animals actually improve our quality of life. God doesn't just want us to exist. He wants to improve our quality of living. Animals help to do that. In fact, even animals we don't like improve our quality of life. Things like skunks, ant, mosquitoes improve our quality of life. They help maintain the ecological balance of the earth. We need them all because God is trying to improve our quality of life. I'm still trying to figure out why he made mosquitoes and why they improve our quality of life, but I believe him beyond myself. So the next time that I smash a mosquito, I'm going to do it in Jesus' name. And I'm going to thank him for it, even though I don't understand why in the world you made them. But it is for our quality of life. Had an opportunity to interview Dr. Karen DeLay Noner, who is a seasoned veterinarian. And I want us uh, to listen as she gives us insight here today. Watch this. Well, greetings and grace, beloved Hope Church family. As you know, we are in a study on animals and the spiritual life. What can animals, God's creation, teach us about God and the spiritual life? And today we are privileged to be with Dr. Karen DeLay Noner. Yes. Dr. Noner, thank you so much for being here and spending your time with us. Absolutely. Uh, tell us where we are. Okay, we're at Southern Crossing Animal Hospital. Uh, Southern Crossing Animal Hospital has been home to me for 23 years. Tell me a little bit about your spiritual journey. Yeah, so I was raised in the Mississippi Delta. I was um, a member of a little Methodist church in Moorhead, Mississippi, and came to accept Jesus as my Savior when I was 12. And so um, grew up in the church, active in the youth group. Um, Jesus was real important to me. Um, went to veterinary school, got out of school, got married, and realized that Jesus became my savior at 12, mm. but he really became my Lord when I was in my early 30s. Yeah. It, I understood more what it meant to surrender to him in everything. So what type of animals do you care for primarily? Primarily dogs and cats. Okay. Um, the animal kingdom's pretty big, um, uh, but we limit it to just what I call companion animals. Now, somebody might call a dairy cow companion <laughs> animal because they get pretty close to those dairy cows, but we just limit it to dogs and cats here. What are two things that you have learned over the years that dogs and cats, or animals in general, mm -hmm. teach us about God? You know, as I've thought about that question through the years, um, I think the first thing that comes to mind is just an, just an unconditional love. Mm. Animals, if you own an animal and you come home at the end of the day, they're gonna be super excited to see you. If you go check the mail and come back to your house, they're gonna be super excited to see you. If you are sad, if you are happy, if you are glad, whatever the emotion you're experiencing, they are right there and want to love on you unconditionally. Mm -hmm. And I believe that, that creation worships. I believe that when dogs are walking in their created intent, they're worshiping the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so when that animal is walking in that unconditional love, which I think again is a sweet reflection of the spirit, then um, he, that dog is worshiping and that dog is giving me just a little glimpse mm. of what that looks like. Wow. I don't know many humans that on a day in, day out basis can unconditionally love, yeah. but I yeah. see a lot of animals that are able to do it. So that would be my first one. Okay. Um, I think the second one would just be um, how they reveal the goodness of God. Um, you know, when Adam, was um, in the garden mm -hmm. and, and God brought the animals to Adam and said, name them. Yes. Because he saw Adam was lonely. He wanted Adam to have companionship. Yes. When he gave Adam the ability to name them, to me that's such an intimate gift that he yes. was given because the, he gets to say who they are, what they are. And naming something is an intimate thing. So I feel like that human animal bond is so mysterious and I think it started in the garden. Mm -hmm very mysterious still to me, 
But the goodness of God, I think, was revealed in that. So to me, animals are just, again, a reflection of his goodness because they were such a gift to Adam in the garden, and they're still a gift to us nowadays Excellent. as well. Very good, yeah. So unconditional love and perpetual goodness of God. Animals help us to be reminded of these characteristics of God the Father. Let me hasten to add that when we talk about unconditional love, we're not talking about that God uh, loves us so that he will allow us to sin or to continue uh, to disobey without consequences. We've lived long enough to know that when we disobey God, there are consequences. The unconditional love is when God the Father receives us, accepts us back into his family, no matter what we've done. No matter what you have done, if you are listening to me today in person or online, if you have breath in your body and blood running warm in your veins, then the unconditional love of God is available for you. In fact, Paul writes in Romans 2 and 4, you can read it when you get home, that it is the goodness of God that leads us to repentance or to change. We know that's true. God is so good to us. We, even when we are minding our own business, he is so good to you and to me. He keeps us alive. He keeps us fed. He keeps us well until we come to ourselves and we begin to see his goodness. That is what often leads us to change and to surrender. Animals help to accentuate the um, unconditional love of God and the goodness of God. And then there's something else, two other things she helps us with. Watch this. What are two things that you believe animals can teach us about the spiritual life? What I've seen in them is just an undying forgiving spirit. Hmm. So, you know, they come into my office and I have to inflict discomfort at times. <laughs> I have sharp things like needles and scalpel blades, right? And of course, we're always trying to take care of pain and, and maybe not inflict too much harm. Um, we take our fear-free certification very serious as we're trying to create an environment where they're gonna be less fearful. But when I have to inflict an uncomfortable process to yes. a pet, once they're over it, they're wagging their tails, licking me in the face. It, there's just this undying forgiveness that they wow. give. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of it out there and in, cat, in the cat world as well. And so once again, as I compare them to humans, yes, we forgive. But forgiveness sometimes comes a little bit more difficult to us. Yes, yes. And then you also see these abused animals mm -hmm. that even after some pretty severe neglect or abuse, a lot of these animal, animals are able to overcome it and still want to befriend, still wow. want to reflect that goodness, still want to be a companion to you in spite of the fact that the human was typically the one that created the pain and, and suffering for the animal. Wow. So just the forgiveness that I see. Um, they have a persevering spirit about them. Um, again, when I go to the doctor and have something done to me, you know, I'm a little bit of a weenie about it, and I don't want to push through pain, and I don't want to do all that. Um, animals are different. They have this strong will to live. Um, you know, we in the animal care community are given the gift to be able to be the hands and feet of Jesus, to try to heal, but the healing comes from him and the healing comes from their perseverance to want to heal, their perseverance to want to live. So it's taught me a lot about forgiveness. It's taught me a lot about persevering, just watching them. Wow. And you think as, as humans and as Jesus followers, we need both of those? <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> I like what she said. And it makes me think about, has someone inflicted some pain to you, misunderstood you, maligned you, and you need to forgive? Is there something in life that has thrown you a curve and you need dogged 
persistence. Animals can teach us that. Let me read a story that has always been inspiring to me. In 1986, the Italian runner Gianni Pole won the New York Marathon two, min two hours, 11 minutes. In 2003, the Kenyan runner Mark Yatik won the LA Marathon two hours, 10 minutes. But the most notable marathons of all time may have been run by the guy who finished with the slowest times ever recorded. In 1986, he finished last in the New York Marathon, 98 hours. In 2003, he finished last again in the Los Angeles Marathon, 173 hours. Now, before you laugh at Bob Wheeland, note that he completed both marathons using only his arms and his torso. Bob had no legs. In 1969, while trying to rescue a fallen buddy in Vietnam, he stepped on a mortar round designed to destroy tanks. He sent this short note home to his parents, and I quote, Dear Mom and Dad, I'm in the hospital. Everything is going to be okay. The people here are taking good care of me. Love, Bob. P.S. I think I lost my legs. Bob could have shriveled in a wheelchair, but with dogged persistence and a strong will to live, he did not give up. Instead, he walked across America on his hands. This exploit took three years, eight months, and six days. He also twice made a 6,200-mile round-trip bike ride across America and holds four world records in weightlifting. It's no wonder that Bob Wheeland is called Mr. Inspiration. The NFL Players Association awarded him the title, the most courageous man in America. And Bob told the Associated Press, these feats are somewhat supernatural, but done by the grace of God. Maybe life has thrown you an unexpected grenade or some tough life circumstance has you on the quiet edge of desperation. Robert Service wrote this, it is the steady, quiet, plodding ones who win the lifelong race. Let the nature of dogs then remind us afresh of these four things. God's unconditional love, no matter how unloved I may feel from time to time. God's unparalleled goodness that has kept me alive up to this very moment, which means I have an opportunity to change. His undying forgiveness, no matter how far you have fallen or how many times you have sinned, and let the nature of dogs remind us of God's the Father, Father's dogged persistence toward us. He pursues us and he woos us into his kingdom. And you can even reach out now in silent prayer and he'll help you. And so will we. King Solomon said in Ecclesiastes 9:11. I also saw other things in life that were not fair. Like the fastest runner doesn't always win the race and the strongest soldier does not always win the battle. But that person who has dogged persistence. I asked a lot of people a lot of questions. What would you ask a veterinarian? And almost the number one question that they asked um, was this one. And so I asked her, and we'll close with this. But Watch here this. is the $64,000 <laughs> $64, Everybody's waiting to hear this. Yes. Will dogs and cats be in heaven? <laughs> Woo, 
Ooh, I love this one. I love this one. Um, so can I just share a little bit about the evolution of how I got to where I am? Now? Absolutely. So growing up in a traditional denomination. No, no, I just want to know the answer. Yes or no? <laughs> yes no. is the answer. Okay, no, okay, okay. Let me tell you how I got no, there. No, no, go ahead. Um, so uh, growing up in a traditional denomination, um, I was taught that um, what separated us from the, from the animals is that I had a soul, I had an eternal aspect to my being, and that animals had bodies but no souls. So when they ended their life, it was just over. Uh, go through veterinary school, started my early practice and was just challenged all the time with, again, these end of life discussions and what I was seeing and how animals were revealing some of the nature and the character of God and teaching me things about my own spiritual life and thought, gosh, there's got to be more. Mm -hmm. So I just started digging and I landed in Romans 8. Mm -hmm. um, Romans 8 talks about the futility that was put upon creation mm -hmm. when man sinned. Mm -hmm. And so when, when man chose to step into sin and when the world fell, so to speak, all of creation was impacted. Right. Trees, grass, animals, man, we were all impacted. And when God talks about redemption, he talks about redeeming all of his creation. In Romans 8, it talks about that with that, all will be redeemed. If, if, if the new heaven and the new earth that will be brought to us is going to be a redeemed place where order will be and no chaos and where his intended creation will be restored. I just have to believe that animals are part of that. Will I know my dog in particular? I don't know, he hasn't revealed that to me, but I do feel like that they are part of his redemption story and I trust him, okay. so I can trust him in that. Interesting, astute answer. Um, and so many of you wanted to know the answer, and so she gave it her best shot. I love her thinking on the subject. Animals are evidence of God's affection, his beauty, and variety, which improve our quality of life. Let's pray together. Indeed, our Father, these creatures that you have serenaded us with, we ask that you would help us to be reminded of your glory. They advertise and highlight your name and spotlight your creative genius. We ask that you would help us to see in them your beauty and variety and how you use them to improve our quality of life. And now we pray that we would get a glimpse of your character, your unconditional love, your perpetual goodness, undying forgiveness, and your dogged persistence to pursue us and to woo us into the kingdom and to keep us as we grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So thank you for these kingdom instincts. In the name of the King of kings and the Lord of lords, even Jesus our Savior, we pray and we praise you. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Let's stand if you would. Receive the benediction. Listen, arise to read. Please go by that table if you got an hour to spare during the week to help second graders improve their lives as well as our city's life. And then Pastor Eli and I are doing a class called After Hours or After the Benediction. This is an opportunity to ask pastors questions about the sermon that you didn't have a chance to ask in a worship setting like this uh, that will be on a wild Wednesday. Go and register for that class. I think you'll find it informative and also it would inspire other conversations where we learn from others too. Look up at me. Now unto him who is able this week to keep us 
and our joys and our sorrows and our laughter and our tears and our work and our leisure until he allows us to meet again. And all who agreed said, Amen. Now there are some special treats, ice cream and popsicles at the cafe area. Don't rush away as you leave. Thanks for joining us today. We love to pray for you and celebrate alongside you. Please share anything going on in your life with us at HopeChurchMemphis.com slash prayer and subscribe to the Hope Church Memphis YouTube channel to experience previous worship services and more. Have a great week. Thanks for joining us today. We love to pray for you and celebrate alongside you. Please share anything going on in your life with us at HopeChurchMemphis.com slash prayer and subscribe to the Hope Church Memphis YouTube channel to experience previous worship services and more. Have a great week.